practice of finishing drywall, or mudding as it's often called, involves strengthening and sealing the gaps between sheets of freshly hung drywall with tape and joint compound, then sanding the walls smooth so that when they're painted or wallpapered, the surface is uniform in appearance. It's a process that looks and sounds deceptively simple, but the reality is that it can take years of practice to perfect a truly professional drywall finishing technique. The tools and materials needed to complete the project include a 5 to 6 inch taping knife and a 10 to 12 inch taping knife, preferably stainless steel, a Phillips screwdriver, a drywall hammer, a utility knife, a stain blocking primer such as kills, metal corner beads, some drywall nails, ready mix drywall joint compound as opposed to setting type which we'll discuss later, a stainless steel mud pan, a large bucket of water, some rags, paper drywall tape, 120 grit sandpaper, a sanding block, a dry sanding sponge, and a dust mask and eye protection. You'll also need a ladder unless you can comfortably reach up to ceiling height without one. In this segment, we'll be finishing a wall in an average room, along with inside and outside corners. Keep in mind, though, that most drywall finishing jobs start with the ceiling. In this room, we've just finished the ceiling and are getting ready to begin the walls, but the techniques we'll show you here are exactly the same ones used on the ceiling. Before you begin work, it's important to make sure that all of the fastener heads are flush with the wall. If you carefully slide a small taping knife across the fasteners, a clicking sound will result when the knife makes contact contact with the fastener that sticks out too far. If screws were used, a few twists with a Phillips screwdriver should do the trick. Protruding nails should be carefully tapped in with a special drywall hammer. A regular hammer can be used for this, but you'll have to be very careful to avoid damaging the wall board. Use drywall nails to fasten metal corner beads on all of the outside corners for reinforcement and protection against wear and tear. If you don't do this, the corners will eventually suffer nicks and gouges. There should be about a 1 8 inch gap between the corner bead and the wall board. Try to use a single length of bead for each corner. If you join two pieces, you may end up with a bump or a crease at the junction. Using the utility knife, cut away any torn drywall paper from the gypsum core. This allows the exposed spots to be covered and reinforced later with joint compound. Spray stain blocking primer over the exposed areas to seal in the chemicals that could otherwise bleed through the finished coat of paint. Now it's time to prepare the joint compound. Lightweight, all-purpose drywall joint compound works well for most projects since it tends to shrink less than heavier formulations. Plus, it's easier to sand. Joint compound is available in ready-mixed and powdered versions. We'll be using a ready-mixed compound for our project. It's ready to go right out of the container, though it needs to be stirred by hand first. Sometimes you also need to add a little water to make it easier to spread. Powdered joint compound, known as setting type, is used by a lot of drywall finishing experts because it hardens much more quickly than regular joint compound. This saves a lot of time on the project, but you really need to know what you're doing when you use it. Setting type compounds are formulated to harden in a specific period of time, usually 20, 45, or 90 minutes. The faster the set time, the more skilled you need to be. With the knife full of mud, begin at ceiling height, spreading a thin layer of compound over each joint with a long sweep downward. Hold the knife almost parallel to the wall when starting the sweep, then press it flatter while sweeping down the length of the joint. Do be sure to shut off the electricity before filling gaps around electrical switches and receptacle boxes. Clean the knife often as you work because hardened compound on the knife can hamper your smoothing efforts. It's also important to clean the mud pan before the compound has a chance to harden. Dispose of any hardened compound in the trash. Don't put fresh mud in a pan with hardened compound in it. If you do, the fresh mud will stiffen more rapidly. The next step in the taping phase is to apply the drywall tape to the joints. We're using paper tape for our project, but I should mention that there's another type of drywall tape, fiberglass mesh. The big advantage of mesh tape is that it's self-adhesive, so it's faster to apply than paper. But it's only intended for use with setting type joint compound, not with ready mixed. Paper tape may be used with either ready mix or setting type joint compound. It's less expensive and it won't snag on taping knives as readily as mesh tape will. It also works well on inside corners because you can crease it to work it in easily. 
Cut the tape to size for each joint, then press it by hand just hard enough to make it adhere to the wall. Using the knife, flatten the tape into the compound, working from the center of the joints to the sides. The goal is to embed the tape in the joint compound. Don't be afraid to apply some pressure here because you don't want to leave any air bubbles. Some of the mud will scrape away. Just make sure there's still mud under the tape. Repeat this process until all the joints have been taped. The final step of the taping phase is to spread a thin layer of joint compound on top of the tape. Use a light touch, applying just enough mud so that the tape is covered but still visible. Work carefully, but don't worry about making this layer completely smooth because you'll be applying additional coats later. Now let's take a closer look at taping techniques for corners. Inside corners can be a little challenging. Apply a thin layer of mud inside the seam and on both sides of the corner. Measure and cut the length of tape needed, fold it in half lengthwise, and press it into the corner. Run the knife down each side of the corner to set the tape in the mud, then coat both sides of the corner with a thin layer of mud. Outside corners pose a different challenge because there's a space between the ridge of the corner bead and the drywall surface. To fill this space, load the knife with mud and run it down each side of the bead. Then hold the knife at a 45 degree angle, touching the wall and the ridge of the corner bead while spreading the mud. The end result should be a four inch wide band of mud on both sides with the gap eliminated. Finally, mud but do not tape the rows of nails or screws using the technique described earlier. Once the fasteners are mudded, clean the tools thoroughly and that's the end of day one. Allow the tape coat to dry overnight. If you have a bucket of prepared compound to be used the next day, pour some water on top of it before covering to keep it from drying out. Be sure to dump the water before using the mud. With the tape coat completed on day one, the application of the fill coat occupies day two. While the tape coat makes everything level, the fill coat helps smooth things out. Use the large taping knife to apply additional compound on each joint, feather it out with a stroke down each side of the joint, then down the middle using less pressure than you did on the tape coat. Once the fill coat has been applied, the tape should no longer be visible. Be sure to cover the rows of fasteners with a fill coat too. While applying the fill coat to outside corners is pretty straightforward, inside corners can be a bit tricky. The best way to complete this task is to apply mud to one side of the corner, then wait until that side is dry, about 24 hours, before mudding the other side. This keeps you from damaging the first side while you're working on the second side. Once you're done with the fill coat, except for the other side of your inside corners, that's the end of day two. Clean the tools thoroughly and preserve any prepared joint compound as described earlier. Day three brings the task of applying the finish coat. This is the coat that needs to be as smooth and even as possible. Before you begin slinging mud, scrape all the joints with the large taping knife. This will help you smooth out any ridges or tool marks. To apply the finish coat, use the large taping knife the same way you applied the fill coat, except this time around your goal is to feather the joints as smoothly as possible. The rows of fasteners require a finish coat, as do all your outside and inside corners. But remember that since one side of each inside corner still needs a fill coat, the finish coat for those corners will require a fourth day in the project schedule. Once the final coat is completely dry, lightly sand the joints with sandpaper and a sanding block. Use a sanding sponge on the inside corners. Sanding joint compound is a really dusty job, so it is important to wear a dust mask and eye protection. Before painting the freshly finished walls, be sure to apply a coat of primer. Using a primer will reduce the differences in texture between the drywall and the finished joints, plus it ensures that the finished paint is more evenly absorbed into the walls.